for the Rick Carlisle Show on 1070 WIBC. If you'd like to talk to the coach, call us at 239-1070 or toll free at 1-800-571-9422 or 1070 on your Verizon wireless phone. Harrington carries himself, front court left, accelerating baseline. Oh, beautiful. And he took it in off the left-hand glass. Boy, he went left, flew around it. Harrington with four, Indiana in front, 13 to 11. Pacers by one, O'Neal left edge of the circle, dumps it into traffic. Jackson makes a terrific catch and then turns and lays it off the glass for two as he's fouled. Jackson out of the right corner. He's it into the lane and O'Neal thunders it down with both hands. Slap it, baby! for Jermaine, Indiana by two. Rebound down low, Burleson. They look for a double-figure lead here, and they'll get it, and Burleson feeds it into the open floor and May takes it home with two hands. May has 20, 16 of that here in the second half. They lead by 11. Morrison's going to dribble off the clock. The Bobcats will win this one. Their first preseason win in six tries. Pacers fall to three and four. Hello there, and welcome to the first edition of the Rick Carlisle Show on the home of the Pacers, 1070 WIBC. Thanks for joining us tonight from our studios in downtown Indianapolis. I'm Kevin Lee. We'll be visiting with the head coach of the Indiana Pacers weekly once again here on WIBC. The program will normally air on Thursday nights. Unless, of course, the Pacers are playing on Thursday night, which is the case tomorrow night. They wrap up the preseason playing in Salt Lake City against the Utah Jazz. 9 o'clock is the tip, 8.30 the broadcast time here on WIBC. So we'll keep you up to date as to when the show will air each week. Uh, but normally on Thursdays, unless we need to move it around, and then we'll let you know during Sports Talk or on Pacers Broadcast. And I believe Pacers.com also has links and information as to when the show will air as well. The Pacers 3-4 and four so far in the preseason. Again, wrapping up tomorrow night, and the regular season starts a week from tonight in Charlotte. With us, as always on our programs, the voice of the Pacers, Mark Boyle, who joins us from Salt Lake City. Good evening, Mark. Hello, Kevin. And we'll turn it over to you now as we welcome the head coach of the Pacers, Rick Carlisle. Coach, good to have you back for another season. Thank you. Good to be back, Kevin. How are you? I'm doing great. Good. It's been, what, five months since we've done this, so I assume, Rick, you spent the summer going through withdrawal. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's very difficult not hearing your voice for that long period of time. I can only imagine. It's so soothing. Yeah, I can only imagine what a difficult situation <laughs> that must present. This is very, it's uh, very difficult. Yeah. This is this has been a real interesting preseason for a variety of reasons. You have all of these new guys, and you're trying to incorporate a different style of play with one preseason game left. How would you assess the progress? Um, well, we, we need to make more progress. Um, at times, as you know, we've we've done very well, you know, with with what we're doing and trying to do. And uh, but anytime you get guys back into the fold that haven't been playing much it's uh it becomes more challenging and so you know with jermaine and uh and marquise in there last night it, it was it, you know it's tough for them because they've been out for for a while um but i think you know at times we we did some good things and and we continue to learn and uh we just gotta hope we can continue to move toward being completely healthy and that uh tomorrow night against utah is a is a, is, a, is a constructive game, and then we can uh, make some more strides. Well, the inconsistency or the erratic nature of the progress would not necessarily have been something you wouldn't have expected, would it? Have? No, it, it wouldn't have been. Um, you know, so, yeah, I mean, that's just that's the, the simple answer. You know, when you're, gonna, when you're playing faster and bringing more possessions into the game, um, you know, you're going you're gonna to have some more turnovers now. You, you hope that it doesn't translate into the number we had last night, which is a record for any team that I've had. But, uh, you know, there's going to be some high turn overnight. So, you know, you, get, you deal with it, you, know, you learn from it, um, and you got to keep pushing forward. Have you seen enough so that you feel like you have a feel for what the new players can do and how they might fit in? I have a feel, yeah. Um, but I think as you're aware, and most people that follow the NBA, you know, and, yeah, exhibition season is 
is not a complete litmus test for the NBA season. You know, they're, they're, this is sort of like open season for guys that, you know, are in the business of making teams, guys, you know, that um, are fighting for the last two or three roster spots. I mean, this was kind of, you know, what my gig was when I was a player. And you get, you know, you get real ready for this. And then, you know, once you, once you make a team, um, and get into the regular season, you, you know, you hope guys can continue with the same sort of uh, game that they've shown you. And, and, and at times they can, and other times it's tougher because normally you go from situations where, you know, guys off the bench are getting 8 to 10 and sometimes 12 minutes in a row to, you know, um, parts of games where they're getting four or five minutes and uh, that, that becomes more challenging for them but that's, you know, part of what being a role player is about. You got 17, you can carry as many as 15. Do you have a handle on what you want to do or is it possible that somebody could still sway your opinion one way or the other as far as those final spots are concerned? Well, I, I believe it's, it's still somewhat up for grabs. Um, you know, I have not had a uh, definitive conversation with uh, Larry Bird and Donnie Walsh about, you know, what we're going to do with the final roster yet because I think we do want to see how tomorrow night goes and, you know, you never know, um, knock on wood, you know, if when an injury, another injury enters the situation and that may change your outlook or whatever. So, you know, you kind of got to, you kind of want to wait till the last possible moment um, before you do something. But, you know, it's pretty clear we got, you know, 17 guys that are very good players and, and all of these guys have been on NBA rosters before with the exception of the two rookies who uh, have shown some good signs. So, you know, it's going to be a tough cut. And um, there's going to be a good player or two that's uh, left out there for either another team or, uh, you know, an opportunity to do whatever, maybe go to Europe, maybe play in the D-League. Uh, but, you know, we have some good quality players here, and, you know, it's going to be tough to let a couple of them go. Through seven games so far, just looking at the big picture, what has impressed you? Who have you seen as you've looked at Rick and said, this guy really is doing what we need him to do? Well, you know, for the most part, I, I really like uh, how Tinsley has played. You know, he, he had a struggling night last night, um, due in part to the fact that he picked up, you know, those two quick fouls. And so that was uh, that was tough. And uh, But I, I've liked him a lot. I've liked, uh, you know, Harrington has done great. Um, you know, I'm really pleased with... Uh, you know, how Jeff Foster has been able to come back and, and really get back into, you know, the kind of form that we were used to a couple of years ago before he had these summertime uh, hip surgery situations. So, you know, those guys and, you know, a lot of other guys have played well, too, like uh, Josh Powell's played real well. Uh, Raul Marshall's played real well. Uh, you know, we've, we've seen flashes from our, our two rookie players. Um, you know, I, I feel like Harrison's played well, even though he hasn't played a ton of minutes. And, uh, you know, he got a little carried away last night with the referees one time. But, uh, you know, I, he's been relatively healthy. So in the health department, I think we're very pleased. Um, you know, Jermaine is just getting a chance to get back in now and, and did well last night with the hamstring. And, uh, and Marquise Daniels is going to be another guy that, you know, I, I probably don't have as good a handle on as I'd like to because he was he participated in about the first week of camp. Then he started to have problems where he had to miss parts of games and parts of practice, and so it's been difficult getting a handle on on his situation. So, you know, I look forward to that. I look forward to having him healthy. But uh, you know, there've been a lot of guys that have played well, and you know, I can't say that I'm really disappointed in anybody. The two rookies, White and Williams, would theoretically be eligible to go to the developmental league. Does the franchise have a position on whether or not they would like to send these guys down there or, in fact, whether they'd have use for the D-League in general? Uh, I believe that there's a good possibility that that, that could happen with, with one or both of them. You know, um, <clears throat> with the way it's set up right now, 
you know, there's going to be a very strong possibility that at least one of those guys, if not both, could be on the inactive list for long stretches. So uh, rather than do that, it, it makes sense for them to go and get some playing experience against professional players, and it's been very beneficial for a lot of guys. Uh, you know, like Raul Marshall last year played um, a significant stretch of the D-League when he was with Dallas, and, and you can tell, I mean, he's a second-year player, but... You know, he doesn't look like the wide-eyed rookies that you see walking out into these exhibition games. He looks like a guy that's that's been around some now, that's been down to the minors, seen what that's about, and that you know has made a a conscious um, decision that you know he don't want to go back down there. So, you know, I think, and that's one reason I think that he's uh, played well, and along with the fact that I think he's pretty good. So. Uh, yeah, I do think it's possible that, that those guys could uh, could spend some time down there, but I, I don't know for sure when um, or where or, or any of that kind of stuff. One more preseason game. Would you be inclined to treat it more as a regular season game and work on rotations and things of that nature? Yeah, we tried to do it last night, um, and I think did it pretty much through the third quarter and then just uh, made the decision to shut these to shut these guys down not to push Jermaine any further and you know take the opportunity to get the young guys some some time and you know that's uh that's kind of where we are but I think tomorrow you know we may we try to stretch it out you know into the fourth so um, you know we'll, we'll see how it goes um we do have some health considerations and, and some things like that so uh it's hard for me to say exactly for sure, but yeah, that's that's the direction we're headed. O'Neill and Daniels at both uh, missed some time, Rick, with those hamstring problems, and they did play last night. Did they make it through okay? To this point, yes, uh, they did, and uh, and that's good news because both those guys are, are key guys, and I got a feeling that Marquis is going to be a very important um, guy on our roster, you know, and, and in our rotation because of his the versatility and, and ability to. To do things with the ball, I think you know. In the, on this year's team, he may translate to kind of what Freddie Jones did for us uh, last year in terms of maybe being a a playmaker and being able to you know drive, kick, make plays, get through us off the ball to shoot a little bit and stuff like that. So um, you know he's he's key and you know he played uh, about nine minutes in the first half. Um, and then at halftime, he just started to stiffen up a little bit, so we, they felt, you know, our trainers felt, you know, better to treat this thing now, um, get him iced down, try to get him ready for Thursday, and you know, we're going to look to play him in the fir- in the first and second half tomorrow, and and hopefully, you know, he'll continue to make progress. That's the coach of the Pacers, Rick Carlisle. We are in Salt Lake City tomorrow night. The Pacers close the preseason here with a game against the Jazz. The rest of the program devoted to your questions and comments, so let's go back to Indianapolis and Kevin Lee. Okay, thank you, Mark. We'll also have enticements for callers tonight. One of our callers each week on the Rick Carlisle Show will win a $25 gift card from Hat World and Lids. You can pick up the latest Pacers gear at Hat World, Lids, and Lids Kids. Uh, And remember, no matter where you're at, wear a hat. Our number is 239-1070. Your questions for the coach of the Pacers on the Rick Carlisle Show on WIBC.